Let's go over the optimizer in the new WinBid Pro version 15 program. It's quite a bit different than what was offered in version 14 and uh, you'll see why. Um, the first difference, main difference is you actually have to uh, intentionally optimize a job and in 14 when you processed a job that was pretty much uh, the program optimizing and figuring out stock lengths and everything but now you draw your elevations and if you were to actually go to the final parts report before you optimized you would see parts but not all of your parts you'd only see uh, miscellaneous hardware and uh, doors you know door hardware things like that so anything that was like packages and not anything that didn't have to be cut would show up but anything that needs to be optimized you would intentionally have to go to the optimizer and open it up and you'll notice when we go to the optimizer first on a brand new job it's empty there's nothing in it so if we follow these steps here we click on step one and we get elevation parts now what it's doing is it's gathering all the parts for the elevations in the job all the different cut pieces and filling this list with them now if you have a multiple of uh, four elevations five elevations different quantities for your different elevations those parts are going to be multiplied in here too. So each part is an individual, or each line, I'm sorry, each row here is an individual piece. And there's no quantity associated with it other than it, it's listed however many times it's needed. So keep that in mind. Um, and the other basic thing is, uh, let's do this first. Let's optimize. So what it's doing is it's taking these cut pieces, and when we hit optimize, it's figuring out the most optimum yield of material. So it's trying to figure uh, the least amount of stock lengths required to use all those cut pieces and giving you the least amount of scrap too. So uh, we have an option to change how it's optimized right here by hitting options. Best yield, that's the one it defaults to. So it automatically tries to figure out the best possible yield. The easier to cut method is more of a longest to shortest method. So we could change that and hit optimize again and it would figure out maybe a different uh, quantity of stock lengths depending on the size of the job. On smaller jobs you probably won't notice a difference but on larger jobs you will. So it depends on if you have an automated saw stop or something like that. The best yield is, is uh, the most optimum and the easier cut method is easiest to uh, have someone manually cutting because they just move the stop shorter and shorter as the pieces get shorter and shorter so keep that in mind that's the way you can actually change that so so now that we've got our list occupied or populated I guess is a good word the uh, optimizing is pretty much done we could go to our um, final parts report now and we're gonna see all our door miscellaneous parts if I sort it by part type here then I'm going to see uh, clips will show up, but then doors and door frames are here, of course, miscellaneous stuff. So anything with a stock, if we didn't optimize, these things wouldn't show up. So keep that in mind. And over here it says, where did it come from? It came from the optimizer. So everything else is just going to say miscellaneous. Um, so that's basically, uh, this is an optimized job ready to print, uh, get our final price. We would just have to change our multipliers, get our net price, and... Uh, we're good for an estimate. Of course, we can do the markup report and add sales tax and any profit we needed. Um, and then we have our final price. But if we go back to the optimizer, then let's maximize the window to kind of make it a little bigger. This is the, the one screen that has a different type of table than the other tables you'll find, like the framing systems, the parts list, the glass list. All those have a different type of table where there's a filter bar. Now this one doesn't have that filter bar. What it has is the ability to drag uh, a field. Like let's take elevations here. If I click this and drag it up to this area, then it's going to actually sub subcategorize the list by um, elevation. So whatever I take, it's going to do that. Now if I take part number and drag it up here, then it's going to do a sub sub sort of part number within elevation. So if we want to get a better view of this I can hit maximize here 
and that shows me a bigger window of just the top half of the optimizer. So these are still all the cut pieces that we're working with. And notice the main category here is the first elevation, sample elevation, and then it's grouped by part. So within the part, it has the different cut lengths. You'll notice the different cut lengths here. So the quantities, and some cut lengths may have multiple pieces. Um, for the sill, we've got three different pieces that have to be cut at the same length. So it's probably a three or four panel opening. Four panels with a door, I'm assuming. So we also have part type here. Now I, I can sort by part type, and that's within, just by clicking on the heading here, that's within the subsorting that I did here. So there's a multitude of ways to sort in this type of uh, list we have here. So if you want to get rid of a, a subsort that we've done, you just take that field and drag it off the list. And that's what that means. So it's, it's kind of a cool feature. Um, we can go back to the seeing the both, both sides of it. So that's the sorting end of it. And uh, it's kind of cool because you can, you can narrow it down to certain parts just by sorting it different ways. So you can just sort it by clicking here. You can drag the fields up, or you can do both. So keep that in mind. Um, and that's for both the top and bottom portions here. You'll notice this little pencil icon here. This is, uh, gives you the ability to change that field. So these are cut lengths. We can actually edit a cut length in this optimizer, something you could never do. Um, actually, you could never even see this information in the old program. It would just optimize it and give you the parts list. That was it. So now you're able to manipulate this list. You can change the length of parts. You can add cut parts just by hitting add. And there'll be uh, a video on kind of more advanced features of this optimizer um, that you'll find too. But for now, uh, if we wanted to change the length of a part, let's say, like one of these, I just need to add an inch to it. First thing I want to do is check save. That means that this change won't be overwritten if I click this get elevation parts button again. So I hit save, I change, I edit the field, I add an inch to that. Now I want to click off of it so that it kind of records that save. So it's real easy to just change the length of a part. And notice how it updates the, uh, this is, think of this as a character field and this is more of a numeric field. So this is the one we change and then it automatically updates that one. And I can change the description here if I want. I can do all that. Now, so that's the basics. You can do that. Um, where this information is coming from, when you create your job, you selected a framing system. That framing system had a series of parts in it. These parts are coming from that framing system, except there's one intermediate step. When you create an elevation in a job, it makes a copy of that framing system. So that framing system is now uh, married, let's say, to this job and this elevation. And it's separate from the master default list of framing systems. So if you go in and change a uh, framing system setting in the master list, it's not going to affect this job that I've already created. It's only going to affect future jobs that you haven't created yet. So if you need to manipulate the part numbers or the stock lengths or anything else, and then have those changes show up in the optimizer for a job you've already created, you need to go to the jobs window and then click edit job parts. So first you want to make sure you're on the job that you want to edit. Then we click edit job parts. Now these are all the part numbers that are going to be used for the job that you're working on. So that means when you hit get elevation parts, this is the source of the information where that's coming from. So if you were to change anything in here, the stock link, the price, the description, um, I wouldn't change a part number, of course, because it wouldn't know what part it was after that. So it still needs to tie the information in the framing system to this list. But the framing system knows what part number to use. This list knows the details of that part number. So once it knows the details and you go back to the optimizer, let's close this. Um, in the optimizer, it pulls all that information in. And then when you optimize, this is for the cut pieces. And then when it optimizes, it knows what stock length it's working with and how to actually optimize it. So look for more videos on more advanced things in the uh, optimizer.